right, I don't always go in this order, but uh, it's probably a good idea to just test the USB on this when you first get it. And while you're doing that, you can quickly set up your radio. And then when you're ready to go test fly, it's pretty much not going to have to do anything. So I'm just going to quickly show you that. I've got Google open here. I'm going to show you what you need to get. Uh, so you need your micro USB cable. And uh, you're just going to power it right, right off that. You're not going to need a LiPo battery to power it at the same time. I'm using this Turnigy 9XR, but any DSM2 radio, you just need to know how to bind. On this radio, you hold the button on the, I've got a module, you hold the button on the back and power it on, and then it will bind. So I'm going to walk you through that quickly. It may be different if you have a different radio, but you can always send me a message. So first thing you're going to need is for your, your computer to detect this uh, USB, you need to get a driver. So I'm going to go to Google. Search, uh, it's a SI Labs chip here, but don't worry about that. I'm going to search USB to UART driver. And then this silabs.com website, I'm going to click there. Now I'm on a Mac, but whatever system you need, scroll down and find the driver for that. And I'm going to click download. Now I've already done this, but now I would run that driver and install it and then when I open clean flight it's going to detect my uh, USB here so now I'm not going to walk you through downloading clean flight but you can you can go through Google and search clean flight download and there it is you'll need uh, Chrome Google Chrome and you could download the clean flight configurator within that. Uh, you shouldn't have any trouble. There's lots of videos on that, but download clean flight, get her going. And then here we go. I'm gonna open up my clean flight configurator. Now, just to let you know ahead of time, all I've done on my radio is set up a four channel airplane, <clears throat> basic uh, throttle aileron elevator rudder. And I haven't changed anything on it. I did add a fifth channel for an arming switch. So I just chose this switch. Whatever switch you want, you just need to add a channel so that clean flight will detect it. And then I'm going to use this switch for a flight mode switch. So two switches that you would probably like to have so you can arm the quadcopter and fly it and you can change it between acrobatic mode and angle mode if you're just practicing or training a bit. Okay, so that's all I've done. Four channel plane plus two channels with switches just so that clean flight will detect those switches. Uh, the rest of it I'm going to set up in clean flight with one exception that I'll let you know about. So here we go. I'm going to plug in my USB to my Sky Sky flight controller here. We should get lots of lights. Now I've already done a bind on this. So I'm going to show you if if you haven't done a bind yet, then you'll get all the flashy lights. You'll get flashing red saying kind of waiting for a connection from your radio. And if it doesn't get a connection and you haven't bound yet, then you get flashing red like that. And that means now it's in bind mode and you can bind. Now, since I've already done that, I'm going to do this again. We'll pretend you've already done your bind. I'm going to turn the radio on. Ready to go. Now when I plug in, there we go. I got instant bind right away. I got red light, no other lights on. So now I'm ready. When I connect to clean flight, it's also going to see and hear my transmitter, which is pretty coolio. So here we go. I will click connect. You can see up here, it's already detected USB to UART. I'm going to hit connect. And there we go. You can see as I move my quadcopter or my flight controller, it's working great on here some flips and rolls. Now I'm not going to uh, calibrate this for now uh, to calibrate it level until it's on the quadcopter. That's one thing I might do later. But for now I will set up my receiver here. So I'm going to go to receiver and this is where you should see all your sticks moving. And I'll just walk you through uh, what you should take note of here. When you roll to the right with your uh, with your right stick the numbers should increase. And when you go left, they should decrease. When you pitch your uh, pitch stick up, they should increase and down should decrease. When you yaw right, the number should increase and left should decrease. 
uh, for my throttle, uh, oh yeah, throttle up should increase, down should decrease, and this is my arming switch, should show auxiliary one, auxiliary two, I've set this switch, and I don't need an auxiliary three personally, so here we go. Well, there's Harrison commenting on my build video. All right. Yo, Harrison. Uh, anyway, so now, if you, there's one problem that you might have here. If you're setting up switches and it's not working, this explains it here. You need to set your channels to go from 1,000 up to 2,000, as close as you can get it. Now, if your numbers are sitting, I'll watch my throttle here. If your numbers are sitting like this, like around 1,100 or 1,200, and only going up to say 1800, it's not gonna detect the full range of your sticks for any of them. So what you need to do is go into your radio. Every radio should have this. Go to your mixer, or if you have, on, not in your mixer, if you have a page with your endpoints or your limits, you need to extend how far that signal goes. So I've already changed all mine to say 125. It's like the farthest they will go. And uh, I'll just do one example here. Channel, four, uh, I'll do the throttle channel, which is channel one. I'm gonna put it back to where it was. So this is default and you can see on screen, my throttle now is at 1136. It's not quite down to a thousand and it is it is up to 1996, that's, that's not so bad, but it's not going low enough. So that's where I adjust my end point here. And look at the numbers on screen. The throttle's going down. And there we go, as low as I can go and it's pretty much close enough to 1,000. So you wanna make sure all your switches, the range is going from 1,000 to 2,000, as close as you can. Otherwise, this next step will not work. So we know all the sticks are working. If you have trouble getting through this step, let me know, I've problem solved it quite a bit, but you need a, at least two switches. If you want horizon mode, you can add a third switch. I didn't really like horizon mode. It's not that useful to me. And uh, everything else should be, you should be able to leave it as defaults, all these settings over here. We can adjust those a little later if you need to. I'm gonna go to my modes. And again, I've already set this up, but what you're gonna see now, hopefully, is you wanna choose auxiliary. Auxiliary one was my arming switch, so I'm choosing auxiliary one. I would have clicked add range auxiliary one and now we can see if I flick the switch the greens moving back and forth and let's say this was over here it's not going to do anything I'm going to save that I'm going to get no arming see no arming light on here and no arming over here so I need to move this range to be within that part of the signal I'm going to move it over here it's pretty straightforward once you end it and we'll see how this works now it's in the range. When it goes into the green range, it'll arm. So I'm gonna save that, click save, and then boom. Now when I arm, you see green light over here on the screen. And on my flight controller, there's the arming light. Arm, disarm. And then you're gonna use the same method for setting up your angle mode. So I would click add range. Auxiliary two is the switch I've got selected up here. And I've already set it up. I set my range to be within that area. That's why you need that 2000 range. So when I switch uh, back here, I've got regular acrobatic mode. And then when I want that angle mode, I flip forward and I've already clicked save on that. So you can see on my flight controller, it's a good way to test it. The blue light indicates angle mode off on and the green light indicates armed so I can sh fire up the motors or disarm them and the red light again just means I have a bind so it's reading my radio so that's the three lights that you're gonna get the other light that I've noticed uh, just for you to be aware of if you're at an angle it'll flash green meaning it's not level enough to safely arm it so it wouldn't let me arm the props in that m mode so that's just what flashing is and there we go, that's the main stuff. Uh, you do want to set fail safe to drop. If you set it to land, it tries to gently land if you lose signal, but what if you gently land in a baby's face or something? So uh, that's why I'm gonna leave that as drop. As soon as I lose radio signal, if I get too far away, um, I've gone a kilometer with this, but if you get too far away, uh, just let it die, okay? Let it come down 
safely. It's a light little quadcopter. It's better to do that than to try and save it with the landing. So I set drop, save and reboot. And then I am good enough for that. Now for me, uh, just for a basic start, I'm going to leave all these PIDs the same. Uh, if you put it in angle mode and it's pretty twitchy, you could bring down the strength of this angle mode, but I'm just going to leave it. This for now is good enough. And I've just set everything to 70, 70, 70 here. Uh, that's good enough for now. If you want those, if you want your yaw, maybe to be, you're looking around to be a little more gentle then you can, you can adjust these, but let's save it for now. That's enough to, we know it's tested and working fine on with the building of the quadcopter. Here we go. Save that disconnect, unplug, radio off, peace out. Check out the next video. We're going to start putting this together. Have fun.